Here in the dry forests of Southwest Colorado, you can go an awfully long way without seeing another human being. At night, the stars are crystal clear, and in the daytime, there's no sound except the blowing of an ever-present breeze. This particular hillside in Dolores County is no different at first glance, but in fact, if you look harder, you might be able to see something kind of unexpected. Certain young trees have been carefully selected for removal. Others have little bits of equipment placed on their trunks. This plot of pinyon pine and juniper woodland, nearly a square mile across, is one of the biggest science experiments you've ever heard of, and it's dedicated towards figuring out what these woodlands need across the entire West. Pinyon pine is both an ecological and cultural keystone species. So pinyon pine produces these delicious pine nuts that are collected every year by animals, from birds to small mammals, and they're also culturally important to indigenous peoples across the southwest region. Pinyon juniper woodlands composed of pinyon pine and juniper trees are one of the largest forest types in the United States, covering millions of acres of the American West. But despite their ecological and cultural importance, data about what pinyon juniper trees actually need to thrive is lacking. There is um, a pretty big gap in research. What's killed me for, for my career as a field specialist was not having good data on the response of the woodland to the treatment. In the midst of this lack of data, pinyon juniper woodlands are suffering from increasing drought, and they're being pummeled with wildfire, which is burning more area now than in the past. Fire that in these woodlands jumps rapidly from treetop to treetop when fire weather is severe. I mean, it's maybe hard to tell, but we're breathing in smoke every day, especially in western Colorado and the Colorado Plateau. Um, you know, there's a fire just north of here that just surpassed 110,000 acres, predominantly of pinyon, juniper, sage, uh, mixed conifer area. Those aren't fire sizes that we typically see or have seen even historically. A team of researchers from the universities of California, Colorado State, and Nevada, the U.S. Forest Service Rocky Mountain Research Station, and fire and fuel specialists from the Bureau of Land Management came together to figure out how to get more information, both on how a fire behaves in these woodlands and what the trees might need from us to survive. They devised a research project that now spans this entire hillside. This is the Dawson Project. So we are standing at Dawson Draw Fuels Research Project, where we have a series of different prescription parameters. The idea is pretty simple. We know from fuels treatments in other ecosystems that removing some trees can be a really good thing, both to conserve water for the remaining trees and to establish fuel breaks where fire has a harder time spreading. But what's the best treatment there is? That, that was a question that I really have... Uh, thought about. So the researchers and the BLM specialists put their heads together to develop a way to test our ideas about tree thinning in pinyon juniper woodland and tried it out across 46 plots on this one remote hillside. Some plots they left totally alone, maybe no interference at all will be best for the trees. In some areas, they uniformly removed mostly younger trees at prescribed distances, leaving old growth trees with predictable gaps around them to see if certain gap sizes were helpful. And the team even worked hard to create a thinning treatment that imitates a healthy pinyon juniper woodland as closely as possible, with trees positioned in clumps and gaps placed almost randomly around them. So at the heart, the key focus of this project is really to understand what types of thinning treatments, if any, are effective at reducing fire risk and increasing the resilience of the remaining trees to drought, given their vulnerability. In all of these treatments, the team placed sensors that will monitor both the soil moisture and how much the trees are growing day to day. And these sensors could last a really long time, even 10 years into the future, giving us a clear long-term picture of how this woodland responds to different thinning and management approaches over time. Eventually, someday when the fire hits that area, we, we will then get to see, was it effective? Did we reduce fire intensity? Did we create an area that can withstand fires. While this project is only just beginning, it has already had effects both on the landscape at Dawson Draw and on the people involved. In the gaps where younger trees were thoughtfully removed, 
a new flush of flowers and forbs are already blooming, and tiny new trees are reestablishing themselves as the woodland resets. We don't have very much data on pinyon juniper as a whole, and as we get more data, we'll make better decisions. And as we make better decisions, we'll get a better product long term, not necessarily for the current generation, but the next. In time, we hope these trees on this hillside, quietly altered by human hands and thoughtfully watched by many, will tell us how to help an entire ecosystem thrive, all while protecting communities from fire.